All right. Welcome to Screen Say. This is your guy, Nathan. This is Melissa Sue. And we are going to talk about one of my favorite, favorite, favorite genres. The horror film genre. <laughs> Which I know has got to be Melissa's favorite as well. Oh, no, no. I don't really care about it. <laughs> I'm sorry. But we're dragging her along anyway. <laughs> I think I got very, very, uh, how you said, deception. Uh, I got a little deception after seeing Blair Witch Project a long time ago. I really thought it was for real. And then when I find out it was bullshit, <laughs> I kind of got upset. Okay, well, were you scared when you saw it? Oh, yes. I was even puking at the at, at the theater. And well, I, well, hell, it did what it was supposed to do. <laughs> it did. And it, it is funny because I even went and slept in the middle of my mom and dad that night with my Bible. That's one of my favorite movies. Really? Why? Tell me why. Okay. For the, it's my favorite movie because I think up until that point, I had seen only one other found footage movie before that. Okay. And, and it wasn't very, you know, it was graphic. It was Cannibal Holocaust. Never heard of it. That was, uh, I think that was early 80s or was it 70s or 80s? I can't remember. Um, so the Blair Witch, it was like, okay, cool. And the, the I, I just thought the premise of it, you know, being footage from something that happened, put you in the story. Plus, I thought it was for real. I so like, thought the same I did, I did. Marketing, marketing. Marketing. So that's the second reason why I love the Blair Witch Project. That was the first... I think, really big viral online campaign. And I, I think a majority of how we, we make things go viral is a good, a, a good example of that is the Blair Witch Project. So I appreciate it on both levels. And even when I found out that that shit was fake, I didn't care because I'd never seen anything like it before. Now, you know, fast forward to, to today, the, you know, it's a whole new genre. It gave birth to a genre... It did. You got you got to respect the hustle on that one. Okay, I will. That doesn't mean you have to like it. <laughs> but I think it's funny that you were scared. You were scared to death when you thought it was real. Oh yeah, the whole thing with me, I do believe in evil yeah. and in good. So when I thought it was for real, I was like, "Oh yes, the yeah. shit is for real." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really happens. Even though it has never happened anything like that for me. So you're up here hiding and stuff, <laughs> yes. thinking something's out in the woods. And but but this is it it, it 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 yeah I don't have too much to say I'm a scary cat. You know what I got to figure out one thing. Do I actually like the horror genre or do I like the thriller genre? And I think maybe sometimes I get the two mixed up. Blood and gore is not my thing. Mine either. Yeah, I don't really care about it. Slasher movies I can sit there in a slasher movie all day all night and never blink. Jump scares, they do absolutely nothing for me when I see a, um, a slasher movie. I think my favorite genre of horror or slash thriller is the supernatural one. Because my thing is, here's my thing with the slasher. I've never had a victim mentality. If you break into my house, I might kill and rob your ass. Okay? If you break in as the thief, you might get robbed by Nathan Lee. <laughs> <laughs> There's a very strong possibility have so many problems with Halloween films or, you know, horror films. Oh, yeah. Come on, you're five <laughs> against one. Oh, yeah, Michael Myers. I just, we, I talked to Nick about that. That was one of the, our, our, uh, our talk was about, it was the David Gordon Green films and the remakes of like um, uh, Halloween and The Exorcist. The Exorcist, The Believer, middle finger to that movie. I'm not, I've already, I, I made a review of it. I spared you that, you know. I has been some uh, previous, and I was not into it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break form, and I'm gonna drop an f bomb. Yeah. Fuck that movie. I haven't yeah. got time. Um, because it was two movies. Bullshit. You know, it was um, you know what it's like, and I and I said this in the review. The first half, you could, I think, I'm hoping David Gordon Green that I'm right about this, and I'm hoping that we get a Zack Snyder release to where we get the version that he wanted. And I'm hoping that there is a version that he wanted. First half, great. It was like a, it was a buildup. It was almost like a, um, a very dark and gritty um, missing person drama because these two girls had disappeared. Uh huh. The second half was corporate, was all corporate bullshit. I mean, they put everything in there that you could possibly put in there 
to uh, and it wasn't good. They brought characters back from the old Exorcist, and their and their character arcs did nothing. You know, you have the mother come back. You know, like she's going to be a uh, Sigourney Weaver or or Sarah Connor. You know, from the Terminator. <laughs> you know, and it's like, what did she say to the demon? We've met before. Oh. And then you get your damn eyes poked out, and you're done. You know, it's like that's it. We you should get Kate. You tell you this story already. Then here's the deal. <laughs> I, I saw I saw a um I saw this review from a guy. He was talking about the advanced screening. There were five people at the advanced screening, including himself. Oh wow. So, you know, there's movies that are anticipated, and then there's movies where people are like, please don't do anything to this movie. Don't don't remake it. Don't and I, you know, me and Nick agreed. If they remake Enter the Dragon, I'm done. Leave Enter the Dragon alone. Okay. Bruce Lee can only play that role. Well, that's what we felt like with The Exorcist. Um, it just was a, a bad, inconsistent movie. So how about Sod 10? Have you seen it? Nah, man, I I, I, I stopped. <laughs> stopped in about Saw 2. You did? I did. Oh, man, well, I went to the theaters. <laughs> it, it was, it, I, I remember all the Saw movies. And I really enjoy them for some reason. But, well, the reason was because they were entertaining how he was getting them and what he was getting. Yeah. So I'm more about the, the mind. I, I agree. I, I feel you. I feel you on that one. And um, and finally, on Tang, you figure out why he is the way he is. Oh, so they have a, they have a like a, a reveal as to. Kind of, it's between one and two. Yeah. Yes. A yeah. reveal about the, the guy who does all this stuff. Yeah. So, but uh, it is funny because I remember it was one in the morning yeah. now, and I was like all freaked out. And then there was this guy <laughs> with his uh, trot broke and just looking at me, and I start running. Right? Wow. That that is how movie, horror movies get me. But I can tell you one now that I remember. Um, uh, Friday the Thirteenth is is the Friday the Thirteenth the one with the guy who goes to the nightmares? Oh no 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 that's that's Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, that is for me the scariest horror film, and I'm gonna tell you why because of us dreaming. Yeah, because you have to go to sleep at some point. It's so logical. You <laughs> you can't get away. You know, in other movies, it's like well, why like Jaws. Oh, why do you keep going to the water? There's a big shark in there. That movie could have ended in 15 minutes. Everybody hails it as a classic. I'm one of the few that was not scared of Jaws. When I was young and I saw it, and we were at the Tower Theater, I think, when it was when it was still a movie. And I look over at Dad. I said, Dad, why do they keep going into the water? <laughs> <laughs> they love water, Nate. I mean, it made it seem like it was inevitable. People are going to die. No, if you go into the water. Nightmare on Elm Street? Everybody goes to sleep. That really, like, yeah. that for me was the, it's been the scariest horror film ever. Freddy Krueger was great. That was a great horror villain, you know. Yeah. Sequels, I got to tell you, the one thing that I don't like, and there's a handful, like Alien? Alien sequels, well, the second sequel. But that's not a horror film. Alien? Well, the first Alien was. The sci-fi. first? But 1979 Alien, if you hadn't seen it. I haven't seen it in a long time. That completely different vibe. Oh, okay. That was like introduction to the first Final Girl, you know, movie style movie. Mm-hmm. Um, Sigourney Weaver was not, her Ripley character was not the badass that she was in the second movie. Second movie. I just remember the second because she was such a badass. It was such it was such a great movie that, that you don't even have to see the first one. Mm-hmm. That's how you know when a movie's great. But like, you know, Freddy, you know, the first movie was terrifying. It was That's surreal. That I remember them. Yeah. It was surreal. It was it was logical because there's no there's no escape. Eventually you're gonna have to deal with this this guy. Mm-hmm. But the sequels, you know, and then Freddy versus Jason. Oh no. Yeah, I just It's Jason along with the mask and the Yeah. Oh, I don't I, he hardly moves. And he, he catches hardly- he catches everybody. Yeah. What's the same logic as that damn shark? If you run at a at a at a, <laughs> at a decent pace, you're gonna get away, you know. And I can't yeah. suspend my reality that much. I will say this though, um, I'm not really big on remakes, and most of the times remakes don't do things that that the the, the original source material did. 
My favorite remake, I think, of all time would have to be John Carpenter's The Thing. Ooh. Yeah, and it's a remake of an old movie called uh, The Thing from Another World, which was based off of a book. Mm-hmm. The Thing, I mean, it was disgusting. It was gross. It had all that, but that's not what scared me about it. The paranoia, okay? John Carpenter did not forget to make a movie that scared on a whole other level because you didn't know who it was in, and then you had these red herrings thrown to where you were looking over at the guy that you're like, yeah, I know it's that dude right there. Mm-hmm. And then something would happen with the guy that was standing by the star. And you would realize, oh, the guy that we didn't think was, you. have you seen it? No. Oh, shit. You, okay. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen that many horror films, just the ones that probably everybody knows. Okay, so here's, here's what we're going to do. We're going to give Melissa... Three horror recommendations, okay? Okay. We're going to scare scare the scare the life out of Melissa. <laughs> okay, number 1. And I know and I'm gonna, and th- these are being selected be- with the understanding that you're not a gory, you know, a gore person. This one is gory. The thing is gory. Okay. But that's not what's going to scare you about it. Okay. Okay, so John Carpenter 1982 The Thing. Okay. The next movie is Pontypool. Okay? I've heard of and you're going to appreciate this. The entire movie happens in one room. Oh, that's okay. like a, a filmmaker's dream. Uh, yeah, you know what? This <laughs> the, Pontypool is the filmmaker's horror movie. Watch Pontypool first. Okay, got it. And I think my last suggestion is going to be um, The Mist. Oh, I watched The Mist. You watched The Mist? I watched The Mist. Uh, uh, Stephen King. Yeah. Stephen King. Yeah. It was okay. Okay. All right. Okay. You're you drive a hard bar. <laughs> so it's okay. All right. Let me think. What's was, how about this? It was entertaining. Okay. It's not as scary. All right. I'm gonna throw one at you. Okay. It's a remake. Mm-hmm. And because you know, you did Shutter Mud, which was very sweet, it was surreal. Yes. Um, and it was almost like its own self contained nightmare to a certain degree. Yes. I want you to watch the remake of Suspiria. Oh, yeah? Never mm-hmm. heard of. Um, the soundtrack, Tom York from Radiohead did it. Um, that right there is a piece of art. And, okay. and I want you to see it because of, you know, the, the technical aspect. I want you to watch, watch it as a filmmaker because I know you're going to appreciate it as a filmmaker. And I want you to watch, you know, just as a, just as a piece of um, visual perfection. Okay. And and it's so interesting because everybody says Melissa, that's where the money is for an independent filmmaker. They're so they're, they're easy to make horror films. No, yeah, make horror films is like yeah. I think those are easy to make. Sorry, I'm saying it. I, you know what? I, I think if we ever ever sat down and write, wrote a um a horror film, I think the horror would probably be secondary. Yeah, I yeah. Think so. It will be more psychological. It would, and they're very dialogue driven. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, all you people that would want us to make one where heads are getting chopped off and all that, you're out of luck. You're shit out of luck. Yes, you are. I, I think for me, the the scariest thing is the mind. The mind. And what what we do with the mind, right? Yeah. What the mind makes us do. Yeah. Uh, that for me, it's scary. Not killing people or, or well, we create a lot of stuff in our minds, you know. And some of the best horror movies are the ones to where you you can't figure out if something's actually happening or not. And by the time you figure it out, if it's a good one, it's so far left of what you thought, you know, to where you can't even trust your own instincts. You can't trust your own senses. Um, I've seen movies like that. Session Nine. That's a good one too. I own Session Nine. If you ever want to get into the the horror genre, that 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 chest behind you has got everything in it. There it is, right there. Oh, that chest. Yeah. Oh, it's 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 pretty good size. Yeah, it's that <laughs> that's my. It's got everything in there. So, question: Why you're so into the the horror film genre? I, I think. Can I say it right? Gen- genre. Genre. Yeah. I think I'm into horror because of the adrenaline rush of it. That's when I initially got into it. But now I'm really fascinated by the fact that what used to scare us doesn't scare us anymore. It's not a, it's not as universal as I thought. So when I find pieces of horror that scare me in a universal way, like I'd have been scared of them the same way in 1980-something as I am now, because there's people that laugh at the original Exorcist. 
that have never seen The Exorcist. That was scary, but yeah, that remember. movie scared the, the yeah. It scared me to death. Doesn't the girl die too? In The Exorcist, no, no, she doesn't die. No, no, later in life. Linda Blair, I think Linda's still alive. Or she's still. Who was the girl who died, like making the film or something? Um, that's Poltergeist, didn't it? Oh, Poltergeist. Poltergeist. I'm getting them confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the couple of people died from Poltergeist. The um, the little girl, she died. She got sick and died. And then the older sister, she uh, she got strangled to death by her boyfriend. Sweet thing about that. Toxic relationship. <laughs> Talking about the movie and baby should have this evil. Baby should have ran. <laughs> she should have ran. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, we're not laughing that she died. No, it's no, just, no, we're not laughing. Yeah, that. And we're not. We're not insensitive. It's no, just we're not. <laughs> it's just it, it, it. toxic relationship. Guy just flew off the handle, and I, I don't know the particulars of it. But there's several movie sets that that claim to be haunted. As a matter of fact, The Exorcist claimed that some stuff was happening on scene. Well, wow. you know, so, you know, that's there's a there's a lot of tall tales and urban legends about that whole production. And several movies have had stuff like that. You know, I don't know how much was in people's heads. I don't know how much was made up. But, um, yeah, I like the horror genre. I just wish there was less schlock and more. Um, what does that mean? I'm sorry. Oh, schlock is like bad, terrible B movies to oh, where. Okay. Yeah, they just, they churn them out. And, and a lot of times they, they don't do well over here. You'll see them on Tubi. But overseas, they're doing they're, they're doing some decent numbers. It's like a guy, I don't know if you know him. Do you remember a TV show called David, uh, called Knight Rider? Knight Rider. Is it the guy with the gold? No, he, he has seen no hydro. <laughs> okay, wait. It's a guy named, it's an actor named David Hasselhoff. Yeah. Okay. Okay, he got this feathery hair. But he became like the poster child for all things that were corny. Okay. And in America, he couldn't sell a record. But then when you take him overseas, that guy goes platinum in Germany or wherever. He's he's terrible. He's like one of the worst actors, one of the worst singers. It's just cringeworthy. Well, the horror genre is kind of, you know, things that don't work over here work overseas. So a lot Very of people, a lot of people make their money overseas with them. Um, and I, you know, I would look at that, you know, just from a professional standpoint, you know, when we you know, move forward with some of the things we're working on. But the markets are different. And um, yeah, he's his brand of action, acting and singing is like we be movie horror to me. <laughs> it's like and, and this is the thing, Jimmy Lee Curtis yeah. is her name. I love her to death. I love oh, yeah. her. Like uh but when it comes to that movie, the Halloween, Halloween. Movie, it's just like I could care less about it. Yes. I just I, I I'm sorry, but like yeah, that. but that doesn't mean she's not good or anything because I like her yeah. a lot. So it, it is, it is. I think it's just taste. Yeah, it's just taste. Do you know anything? Okay, like you know about A twenty four studios, right? No, you know I'm going to tell you something. It's so funny. I'm part of this podcast. Yeah, because I don't know that much. <laughs> she kind of kind of tell maker. He's just you know, it's like I'm, I'm busy making movies. Okay, you sitting up there watching shit. <laughs> I'm making movies, okay? <laughs> she, that, that's so funny, but it's true. Like, you throw all these names up, you know? Like, but there's, there's a lot to discover. Okay, then I'm giving you a lot to discover. And you gave me a lot to okay. discover. It's very interesting. Uh, but I, I really am the kind of filmmaker who I'm just in my bubble doing my own thing. Yeah. So this is very interesting being part of this podcast. Oh, yes. Yeah. I keep learning and learning. <laughs> well, <laughs> to, to, to talk briefly about them, uh, A24 puts out very artistic um, genres of film. And they had, uh, I think they had The Witch, which came out a while back, which was divisive. I don't know that they had Hereditary. I think they might have had Hereditary. These are like the big name horror movies that came out. And they're, you know, if I had to, to classify them, they're like the thinking person's horror. Okay. And then you have their polar opposite, which is Bloomhouse. And I think Bloomhouse just put out that movie Smile. Do you remember that? Did you? Okay. Well, Smile is, a, you know, another horror. I didn't see it because, you know, there was this whole trope where the people would suddenly get this devilish grin and it was like computer generated grin on their face and everybody was using the effect. Oh, okay. That's what I thought it was. It turned out to be good. 
A20. It's a Netflix. Right? It's now on Netflix, I think. Oh, yeah, I just saw it because I was yeah. watching some something. Yeah, you, you, you won't, you know, nominate it for an award. You won't be like, yeah, this is, you'll be like, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's kind of creepy. Oh, okay. But A24 makes you think, and Bloomhouse entertains you. And I think both of them are necessary. And you figure out real quickly which house you, which, which house you belong in. I'm A24. Don't A24, now that you're mentioning more, is someone that goes very experimental. They do. The studio's very experimental, very unique film. Miramax used to do that a long time ago. Now I know who's A24. Yeah. I didn't know A24 was in, like with Bloom, whatever house. They're not together, but they're they're two different ones. Okay, now I understand yeah. who A24 is. Yeah, Bloom House has got its own brand, which, oh, okay. yeah, they might drop a, um, you know, I guess a Nightmare on Elm Street Part 13. <laughs> and A24 will drop something and you'll be like, I don't even know if this qualifies as horror. It's very challenging. Okay. But there's an audience for it. Okay. So, you know, I, I say that to say there's so many different choices of it. You know, the genre isn't as clear cut as let me scare you. It's be it's really let me let me scare you. Let me make you think and let me haunt you. Let me make something that stays with you. And I think A24 does that really well. Bloomhouse makes it, you know, it's a good popcorn movie. Mm -hmm. um, you'll want to go with friends. It's, it's, they make stuff that you would want to see at the Rocky Horror Picture Show when that was going on way back in the days. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very interested about the difference. Oh, like you were talking about horror, yeah. thriller. It, it thrill, yeah. It, it. So when I name horror movies, I was talking to a friend. He's like, no, it's not a horror. That's a thriller. Mm -hmm. Um, I said, um, I said The Changeling. That's one of my favorite movies. That's not a horror movie. That's a thriller. Okay. There was no blood. Only one or two people died in it. And um, it was very story driven. But there was a supernatural presence. So in my mind, what am I thinking? That's, that's, that's a horror. Okay. Because supernatural, when you deal with ghosts or you deal with spirits and all that, isn't that horror? Well, I don't know now. I don't know if it's now in context. Um, I don't know if, if horror is, because Dario Argento is horror. Okay. He originally made the first Suspiria. The one that I'm asking you to watch is the remake. Okay. I couldn't get past the bad dub. They dubbed the entire movie. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and, and you can tell. So I couldn't, you know, visually, artistically, you'd appreciate both of them. But it was, it was, it was blood soaked. Like blood played a, a big part in it. Mm -hmm. You know, the opening scene was one of the most, was, was bloody. The blood looked fake, but that was on purpose. They made, you know, very theatrical. Um, it, um, I don't know. It's, it's. So what makes to you a good horror film then? I think a good horror film has a theme that across the board unnerves people. You know, that universally scares people. Sharks don't universally scare people. Especially if you don't swim. Well, my brother Luis, he's very scared of shark stuff. Yeah, but you know that you know it's 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 a horror that it's just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, your point. <laughs> it's 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 something. It's a universal horror that we can all agree on is scary. That's ingredient number one. Okay. Ingredient number two are people that are faced with that thing that you actually like. And that you actually care about. Because now you're invested in them. You want them to either overcome it, defeat it, or get away from it. Okay. And I think number three is dialogue. Thinking how, you know, how a person would actually react. Um, and sometimes you write dialogue that isn't really meant to be um, realistic. It's, it, you know, there's surreal writing, you know, to where it's almost, it, it would almost make sense in a dream. But dialogue to where... You know, the person you can feel, you know, it stop don't don't stop being a good movie. You know, still be that drama element. Mm -hmm. It's gotta it's gotta be there. And that's why I always defer back to the exorcist. The exorcist was great because not because of the girl and her head turning and all this other stuff and these the special effects. It was the first film to introduce a priest who had lost his faith. And now we have the whole trope for the down and out priest who has to redeem himself. Well, that came from the exorcist. Um in loss. You know, he had family members that he lost. He felt guilt. There were all these things 
that were before the the the, the terrifying stuff, and I I was already invested in the characters. That makes a great horror. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to know. Yeah. Sorry, I don't have too much to say about horror films. Well, you've got an assignment, okay? The three movies that I okay, talked about, I want you to watch at least one of them. Okay. And since this is Halloween, if you don't mind, let's get back and let's talk about what you what you saw. Now, you might say, look, straight middle finger to this. <laughs> that, that, that was terrible. I, I can't believe you wasted an hour and a half of my time. But check them out. Tell me what you think. Okay, I will. And we are going to come back at some point and we're going to discuss what Melissa, you know, why she has some popcorn and, and watch the movies. <laughs> I won't tell you if I left the room or if I could continue watching it or it really scare me. Does she, is she going to run in terror or is she going to say, Nathan, you wasted my time? And yeah, that, and I don't like to waste my time. So. I know this about you. Mm -hmm. So to be continued on that... Um, Share, like, and subscribe our podcast. We're a small uh, pro podcast and we're growing. And this is Nathan and Melissa for Screen Say. And until the next time, everybody take care. Bye-bye.